Vladimir Putin's Pyongyang trip was choreographed to a T, with some surreal made-for-TV moments, like this one of him driving Kim Jong-un on the streets of Pyongyang. Earlier, Kim Il-sung Square at the heart of the North Korean capital was buzzing with crowds and color, as the two globally isolated leaders reveled in each other's company and what Mr. Kim described as a new level of alliance. We highly appreciate your consistent and unwavering support for Russian policy, including the Ukrainian direction. I mean our fight against the hegemonic, imperialist policy imposed for decades by the United States and its satellites. Since his war on Ukraine, Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un have grown ever closer. Now they've signed a defense agreement that calls for mutual assistance in the event of aggression against either side, a move that will no doubt deepen Washington's anxieties. I have no doubt that this powerful treaty signed between our two countries will be very constructive and will be a driving force in the creation of a new multinational world, free from domination, hegemony and unilateral authority. High on Vladimir Putin's priority list is his need for more weapons as the war in Ukraine continues. Russia is desperate to replenish its depleting stockpile, and North Korea can provide that. According to the US and South Korea, it's already been doing so. Moscow and Pyongyang have denied any arms transfers. Kim Jong-un has his own urgent requests. His country, which has been heavily sanctioned for years, is struggling and needs money, fuel, food and other forms of aid. Kim Jong-un and Vladimir Putin have been pressured by the West and shunned by the world. They know there are limitations to what their pariah states can realistically offer each other. But for them, this deepening relationship means they haven't yet run out of options. Shaima Khalil, BBC News, Seoul.